Morning. Uh, yesterday did a video on the new irrigation system that we installed back here. Been waiting three years for that. So today, and a lot of questions came up about water pressure and PSI. So I figured I'd address that real quickly because it's a complex issue, but I'll address, I'll touch on it somewhat. So hold on. Hey guys, disclaimer. <laughs> Doc ain't no plumber, so talk to your plumber if you have any questions. Before you do anything, before you start modifying your home, before you start doing anything, talk to a plumber. Have a plumber come out. Um, one of the best things in the world is to have someone that knows what they're talking about. They usually will come out for a trip charge. Uh, my local plumber here, I think he charges like 40 bucks just to come out and look at stuff. That's a good investment. We're going to talk about PSI and water pressure today um, because I have fantastic water pressure back here because of a special rig that I did. But we're going to talk about how it comes into the house, what impacts your hose water pressure in gallons per minute. So first, let's talk about the GPM versus PSI. GPM is gallons per minute. There you have GPH, which is gallons per hour. GPM and PSI. In water hoses, they typically talk GPMs, which is gallons per minute. And then they talk about PSI, which is your pounds per square, pressure per square inch, your overall pressure. And there's a big difference between the two. Water volume versus the pressure that's coming out of a hose. And you can impact that by several different uh, methods. Now, I'm not going to get into all the scientific and physics of <laughs> drag coefficients and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep this real simple. A lot of your water pressure has to do with two factors. And one's going to be how much PSI that you have coming in at your street. Now, I have city water. And in our area, it's a fairly new construction within the past 15 years, this whole place. So the water system is good. If you go to the older parts of the community, like downtown, uh, water pressure is not that good. Typical water pressure when you turn on your spigot at your house or your sinks is somewhere usually between 40 and 60 PSI. I really recommend just buying one of these cheap little tools here. Now this is a, um, a pressure meter and this will test what your pressure is at your spigots. So this is a spigot. Now remember, if you wanna test your sink, you may have to get an adapter for this. I don't have the adapter with me, so I couldn't test my sinks, but I know what they are. My street water PSI, as it sits at the pipe, is pretty high. I'm guessing it's about 110. I'll measure it over here. Now my irrigation system ties directly into the street. We run a one inch pipe, so we get full GPM, we get full volume, and we get full pressure. So we get all that pressure coming from the main city delivered, not only to my irrigation system, but then I've run that, I've tied into that, and I've run additional spigots back over here. Because my crappy house that we bought, um, the people who built it put in two spigots. There's one in the front, and there's one in the back. <laughs> it really would be nice if they put in a few more spigots. But you have to understand how that comes in from the, from the city and what controls that pressure. So the diameters of things will, will impact the gallons and the pressure. And valves and regulators will also impact that. So let me walk you inside and let me show you my, how the water comes into the house first of all. Okay, so this is our tiny little laundry room we have. And you can see that I have my uh, water heater here. I have my ballast tank up here, which is usually required by code now. This is where the water comes in from the city, this pipe right here. So this is my in. This is my main water shutoff right here. This is my main water shutoff right here. So when I wanna shut off, if I have a leak in the house, I just come here and I can just shut it off here. Well, you'll notice before I get to this shut off and before I get to my regulator, now here's my regulator that decreases the pressure from the city pipe. I have a pipe tying in here. Well, this is my front water spigot. So this actually goes through the wall outside to a water spigot for my hose. So my front hose has really good pressure because it ties in before this regulator. Now this regulator, 
Oh, I can't see it. Maximum. Here, you read it for me. <laughs> I'll read it here in a minute, but let's just see what it says. And it has a double screw on here, and then you can come up and back for it to increase or to decrease the water pressure. Now, you do not want to do this without testing your inside because if you have old pipes or old systems, you can damage it. Then, of course, it goes up and it ties into the hot water heater over here, etc., etc. But this right here is what reduces the pressure to all of your inside plumbing appliances and everything. So it takes, if you're if the PSI coming into your house is 100 PSI, that's going to reduce it down to say 40 to 60, which is considered a safe for your inside plumbing, inside appliances, etc. So you really don't want to mess with that thing. But a lot of people warn against that. But if it's a regulated, if your maximum on that is 60 or 65, you can adjust it pretty safely. You can go to your water faucet, turn it on, do a slight adjustment on that and play with it. So I'm going to show you right now. Oh, I got to get a tripod. Hold on. Otherwise I'm going to get all wet. Okay. So this is one of the spigots that we tied in right off directly off our main one inch line. It has tremendous pressure on it. <laughs> I don't want to get wet, but let me just show you. I have really strong GPM and PSI back here, but let's test it real quick. about 105 psi so this is 105 psi back here so there really is no reduction in this from the street pressure to, to this right here so that's pretty pretty strong and now you know why now the other thing that will impact this are going to be shut off valves and the way you put any valves on here that'll reduce a little bit of your psi but it may impact your gpm greatly and I'll explain that here in a minute. So one of the things that will impact um, the amount of water flow, the available water flow, GPM, is going to be the length of your hose. That will reduce pressure and flow over time and the diameter of your hose. So if you're using a half inch hose, which is small, you're going to have a hard time watering in any volume. Go up to a 5 8 it's better. You go up to a 3 quarter, it's better. But also, don't forget, within that line if you put a bunch of valves and let me show you a real redneck system over here so you see all these connections in here if these connections see how small that is that can really impact your gpm not necessarily your pressure too much but your gallons but the water volume so we were using this last year because we were running several different hoses before we installed um the sprinkler system back here I'd have to run a whole bunch of different hoses and that's why I needed the pressure and the volume back here but when you use those little connectors those turn-ons and turn-offs it you they're very small the whole size reduces down so you can eliminate eliminating those things and going directly into a garden hose will help your volume your delivery of volume your GPM so you can use one way to increase the amount of water is go in and adjust your settings make sure you're up to about 60 on your psi on the inside test it bring it up to about you can bring it up to about 60. a lot of people like barb's house man that's, her house is like 35 it's horrible she needs to adjust it up you can adjust that up to a safe level reduce the number of fittings that you use reduced fittings and valves and use a larger diameter hose so when I use a three quarter inch hose, man, I can, I can take that, I can take this water spigot here. I can take a hundred feet of hose over into Barb's yard and then tie into five eighths inch hose and put another hundred feet on it and still have strong pressure way over there. But let me go out front and I'll show you that spigot that's not tied into the regulator. So I figured I'd cut in here real quick just to show you guys something. Uh, first, let me show you my lawn and show you a testing that we're going to be doing here soon on April 18th. 
It's looking great, man. But we've had a lot of questions about uh, application rates as far as like this cheap organic matter and humichar. So one of the things I always do is I always do extreme testing. I think that's really important to go from low to extremely high. So one of the things that we're doing is I'm putting in a couple test strips where I'm going five to 10 times the normal rate of both the organic matter and the humichar. And uh, two days ago, I came out here, I did a test strip over on barbs and over here. I'm gonna put in one more too. And what we're doing is, and what we're doing is we're taking these, this organic matter and putting it out five times heavier than you might think you wanna put it out. We're putting human char out five times heavier than you would think you normally put it out. And I think that's really important to do to say, what happens if I put it down really heavy? Are there negative impacts on it? Now, I don't think there is. I think it's gonna actually have a positive, but I don't know that. So let's find it, let's test it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it out super, super heavy to see. And I've got a test strip over here and over here. So you don't wanna miss that. Hit subscribe, that'd be pretty cool. And by the way, my front it really has just had, um, the main thing out here is PGF Complete, Humichar, and a little bit of super juice and that's really all we've been doing with it right now i am struggling this year with some brown patch issues again which i have every year and i really think it's due to construction debris down there and what's under the soil deep under the soil um, i'm really having to battle that brown patch down there it doesn't look horrible it just starts off so slow A lot of people will say, well, man, my front spigot's really strong, but my back one's weak. And this is why. It's because they're typically not going to run plumbing all through the house unless it goes to that regulator. This short little front spigot is not tied into the regulator. Here's, I have a splitter on this one. Let's hook this baby up to here. To the regulator. Let's see what we got here. Let's shut this one off right away. Look at that. 101, same PSI as Outback. Well, now it's raining. <laughs> so, I'm under the garage Eve trying to finish this video up. So it's important to understand that you may have strong water pressure on your front spigot and on the rear spigot you may not. And a lot of times that's because one of those spigots or multiple spigots run through the pressure regulator and some of those don't. So it's a little confusing on how they do it and it varies with the code, whether a spigoted water can run through uh, the regular water system, it's a little confusing, but typically you'll see that that's what will happen. That it, you, if you have um, varying pressures, it's often because it goes to the pressure regulator. Now the other issue is, is interior piping. My interior piping is tiny. It's that half inch copper stuff. So my house was built like 15 years ago, so they're still using copper piping. And so, and they reduce the, they reduce the three quarter inch or half inch down, or three quarter inch down to half inch. It's, it's real small. So your GPM is gonna be lower back there too. You got that? It's really hard to get real high water volume off some of these house spigots simply because of all of the travel of this small half inch piping. So there is no real good fix other than check your water pressure, get rid of a lot of those spigots and valve that you have, try and tie directly into hoses and get those hoses to tie directly into the spigots. That'll help some. Um, most people, the highest water volume you're gonna get is through a 5 8 inch hose. If, if you have small pipe run into the spigot, you're not gonna increase your water pressure by using a larger hose. Now with me back here, that's not true. I can run a full three quarter inch water hose back here and have tremendous water volume because that system out here is tapped directly into the main water system. So anyways, just a few little tips for you. Play around with it. Again, if you're gonna mess with your interior settings and that, and that pressure, learn what you're doing first. Um, and get a, get a pressure valve and make sure you're not over increasing your pressure too high. Don't increase it a lot. In other words, don't go, if you measure it and you're at 35, don't bump it up to 60. <laughs> you know, if you're at 35, go to 40 and see if that's good. Increase it little by little. 
Also, if you do have that pressure regulator valve, there's usually a double screw on it. People don't realize that, so you have to do a back off. There's usually two bolts on there, two nuts on there. You have to back off the top one, and then you can adjust it in or out. Um, anyways, guys, hit subscribe. We've got 30 videos coming out. Hope this was a good little walkthrough for you. Hope it helped. It's a rainy day. Thunderstorms. We're on lockdown anyways. <laughs> oh, man. That's about it. I'll talk to you later. Die.